Jared Cannonier just set a significant strike record on the chin of Marvin Vittori, who probably has the best chin in UFC history based on what we just saw. And I have to just say this, based on me getting my last prediction completely wrong, I got this one right to a T. I predicted that Marvin Vittori was going to win the first round and that Cannonier was going to win 49-46, meaning he was going to win every single round after that. And that the reason I was picking Jared Cannonier was based on his ability to make adjustments. And the reason why I'm going to lean towards Jared Cannonier is because he's able to make adjustments mid-fight. And I don't ever see Marvin Vittori make adjustments in his fights. Whatever this man is drilling in training camp, if he goes into the fight with a plan to establish a jab and a leg kick, he's going to be throwing jabs and leg kicks and that's it for 25 minutes. And that came true in this fight because Jared Cannonier couldn't for the life of him find the chin of Marvin Vittori in the first round. I know we just witnessed one of the craziest fights of the year and it was absolutely wild. And there are so many things to talk about. Not only the fact that Jared Cannonier broke records and that Marvin Vittori also just shocked all of us with how fucking tough he is. I mean, it's honestly crazy. I think he's got a better chin than anyone else that we've ever seen, considering that it's a bigger weight class. But nonetheless, I feel like I have to remind people, Cannonier was doing terribly early on. And I was talking about this in my live stream. He got rocked badly. And I started shitting my pants in a fear that I would get this pick wrong too. And then all of a sudden, oh my gosh, I have this serious curse on my channel. And I was getting scared. I was getting worried. And Cannonier was whiffing all of his shots. And Marvin looked huge, by the way. I was saying this to the people in my live chat. I was saying, why does Cannonier look like a bantamweight? He just got rocked by Marvin Vittori and it looked like he shrunk like 50%. And we started making fun of him. And I started to kind of anticipate maybe seeing Marvin Vittori knocking Cannonier out. And I was saying to myself that this could be the once every five year KO mediocre Marvin Vittori gets to maintain his well-rounded status because every well-rounded fighter needs a KO every five years. And then Jared Cannonier comes out in the second round, makes adjustments, and starts beating the shit out of Marvin Vittori and hurts Marvin badly, starts teeing off on him, and starts hitting him with these fight-ending blows. And I'm shocked because I cannot believe that Marvin Vittori is withstanding this. Holy shit. Vittori's chin is insane. Insane. How is this possible? How is this possible? Dude, how is he taking these shots? No, Cannon, you don't get KO'd. Oh, he hurt Vittori badly. He hurt Vittori with a knee and he's still standing. Cannon, you beating his ass. I was freaking out while watching it because the shots that Cannon, was landing on Marvin Vittori would have put anyone else out. He was hitting him right on the button, right on the fucking edge of the chin. And he was landing flush knees and landing flush elbows. He took him down at one point and started raining down ground and pound. So Marvin Vittori, I don't know what this guy is made of, but he's too tough for his own good, man. And the reason why in which he lost this fight is because he can't for the life of him make adjustments. You saw how well he did in the first round. And I was saying this in my prediction video, Marvin Vittori, whatever he's doing in the first round that's what he's going to be doing the entire fight. And Cannonier was the exact opposite. Cannonier couldn't find the chin of Sean Strickland in their last fight in the first round. He started to go to the body in the second and then started to have success. And towards the end of the fight, he was landing bigger shots. This is what he was doing in this fight. He started going to the body. He started going to the legs. He dropped Marvin Vittori with a leg kick at one point in the second round. And because he was mixing it up, the chin was there for the taking. And that's ultimately what won Jared Kennan near the fight. And we saw because Marvin Vittori was doing the same thing and because Jared Kennanier is a good fight IQ, he was able to make his reads and he continued to get better as the fight progressed. You know what I mean? Those traps that he started to set in the second round were perfect for him in the third, fourth, and fifth. And I have to give this guy respect. He's 39 years old and this is the best he's ever looked. Now, that being said, it is mediocre Marvin Vittori and, you know, he looks great against Marvin, but 
he didn't look that amazing against a guy like Sean Strickland. And that's a testament to how good Sean Strickland is. But nonetheless, you have to give him a lot of credit because he just broke a record. And it's kind of cool to see someone that flies under the radar a little bit, like Cannoneer, who doesn't have a boisterous personality, break a significant strike record. He doesn't have a big name. He's not getting these massive paydays. And I couldn't be happier to see a guy like him do well, man, because he is extremely disciplined to be fighting like this at 39 years old, having the best performance of his career this late in his career is incredible. And he is reminding me of Robert Whitaker post losing to Adesanya the first time because he just beat Sean Strickland in a close fought fight, similar to how Whitaker beat Darren Till after getting KO'd by Adesanya. And Whitaker had to fight a bunch of times, had to get a bunch of wins after losing to Adesanya. And this is probably what Cannoneer is going to have to do because, you know, we're not dying to see him fight Adesanya again because that fight was kind of boring. I mean, I literally fell asleep in the fourth round. And Robert Whitaker, sure, we're not dying to see Adesanya and Whitaker fight again, but he's a bigger fan favorite. And if he beats Strickas to Plessy, no one's going to deny him. And to be fair... You know, a lot of us are going to say Cannoneer beat Vittori better than Whitaker did, but Whitaker barely got hit in the second and third round. But nonetheless, another reason why I picked Cannoneer to win this fight is because, again, the Vittori and Whitaker fight was a perfect example of Vittori doing well in the first round and just continuing to do exactly what he's doing in the first, making no changes whatsoever. And this is the issue with Marvin Vittori. He cannot, for the life of him, make adjustments in fights at all. And the only time it can actually work is when you're fighting other completely dog shit middleweights like Roman Delidze. That's basically a big brute swinging the same punch every single time, that right hand. You know what I mean? It, it really is Adesanya, Whitaker, Jared Cannonier, and then Sean Strickland right here. And a lot of people were saying before we got to this fight that Cannonier barely scraped by Strickland. How are you going to pick him to beat a guy in Marvin Vittori that confidently? It's because Marvin Vittori is mediocre, bro. He's not that good. And this is a guy that's 29 years old. But is he really improving all that much? Like, his techniques are getting a little bit crisper. His boxing looked good early on. But man, at some point, you need to also be intelligent to reach the highest peak of a division. And I just don't think that Marvin Vittori is that smart. And I think that a guy in Jared Cannonier is a pretty good, smart, technical fighter and can make those adjustments. And of course, like, look at that jab. He was landing that jab on Marvin Vittori at will. He was landing that right hand on Marvin Vittori's chin at will. He's got really clean, crisp technique, a great fight IQ, an ability to make adjustments, and he was mixing it up as well. That's another thing that I need to mention. We saw Jared Kennedy mixing in the takedowns. This is the way in which Marvin Vittori could have won that fight. And Marvin Vittori tried to take Kennedy down early on, and it didn't work out so well for him. Kennedy got right back up to his feet. But this was a masterclass. Marvin Vittori started getting dominated everywhere. Kennedy probably took him down three or four times. He was beating him up on the ground, was taking him down with these you know, beautiful blast double legs down the pipe. And just kicking his ass on the feet and hitting Marvin Vittori with fight ending blows that any other guy would fall to. Big respect to Jared Cannonier. Amazing performance. I have to give myself some credit because I predicted that to a T. I said Vittori was going to win the first round and lose the rest of the fight because Cannonier is just too smart and he can make adjustments and Vittori's not going to be doing anything differently after the first. But again, I was shitting my pants in the first round and getting really worried. So I will give that to Vittori because he did rock Cannonier early. Amazing fight. I think that Cannonier is probably going to end up fighting either Abu Smagomedov or Hamzat Chemaev next. If Abu beats Strickland, he's not going to get a title shot. He'll probably fight Cannonier because I think Cannonier deserves a number one contenders fight. If it's not Abu, if Strickland wins, we're not going to see a Strickland Cannonier rematch. Then it's time for Hamzat Chemaev to fight Cannonier in Abu Dhabi. You know, we're mid-June right now, and I, I know the Cannoneer has taken a lot of damage, but basically four months until Abu Dhabi. And I don't think that Hamza Chemaev and Kamaru Usman fight is a lock. I don't think that's official. It's not in the books. And if Hamza wants a quick title shot, beating Jared Cannoneer is the best way to do it. You know what I mean? And Jared Cannoneer is bouncing off of one of the best wins of his entire career. His stock is way up after that, especially, you know, because it was so entertaining. And if Hamza could go in there 
and knock Jared Cannonier out or submit him, then that's worthy of him getting a title shot next. So I think that's most likely. We also have to talk about Armand Saryukian. Good performance. I can understand why some people are shitting on him a little bit. He got rocked by Joaquim Silva. But to be fair, this was kind of a short notice fight. He was supposed to fight Renato Moicano. And look at Joaquim Silva. The guy is built and he's got to be on the sauce. First of all, what is up with most people looking like they're on the sauce happen to be from Brazil? Like, is it just that USADA is afraid to go to the favelas? Like, what is this, man? I know not everyone lives in the favelas, but still. Even the women on this card had cap dealt. So I just want to mention that. And Armand getting rocked by this Joaquim Silva guy that's probably juiced to the gills, it's not that bad. He did look like he had improved head movement. His boxing had looked a little bit improved. But to be fair, he still doesn't have that much power. And it doesn't really seem to make all that much sense because he seems like he's jacked. He's pretty yoked for that division. He's got these big legs. He's got a strong torso. I would think that the guy can kick and hit pretty hard, but he doesn't really seem to be able to damage his opponents that often on the feet. Now he's fast as hell. He's got these lightning fast kicks and he did look improved on the feet. Nonetheless, I think Armand Saryukian would finish a guy like Dustin Poirier on the ground. I think he would finish a guy like Justin Gagey on the ground. Now everyone says Justin Gagey's got this crazy takedown defense. Well, who has he proved that against? He got taken down by Habib at will. I know he stuffed a couple of the early takedowns, and Michael Chandler picked him up and tossed him on his head, but no one else has really tried to take Justin Gagey down. I think Armand would beat those guys. He did have some adversity, but again, you're preparing for this guy that's probably sauced up on short notice, and you still finish him, and you still dominated most of the fight. I don't think it's that bad of a look because I know some people might be hard on him. He looked good. He looked impressive, but it's time to get him a big fight. I'm tired of Armand Saryukin fighting these guys outside the top 10, let alone like fighting a guy like Joaquim Silva. What are you doing? So hopefully Armand Saryukin can fight a guy like Vaziv next. That'd be great. Or Jalen Turner, another good fight. Um, and I just need to give a shout out to Bondar and Hernandez. That was one of the best fights I've seen this year as well. It's a shame that Bondar got KO'd badly at the end of that great scrap. And I understand that he landed an illegal knee. It just kind of sucks to see a guy get KO'd viciously in the last five seconds of a fight when if they made it to the bell, yes, he still would have lost, but it would have just been a, a better feeling, especially because it was a late stoppage. We had a lot of late stoppages on the card tonight. At some point, I was worried about Marvin Vittori getting stopped, which is crazy, but he was still able to take that damage, which is nuts. But overall, excellent card, great main event. Armand Sriukian looked good. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Until next time.